I'm Scott Russo. Uh, I play the singer for Unwritten Law. Great. Well, you know, to start things off, how are you enjoying Warp Tour? Love it. Yeah, I love Warp Tour. It's like a fourth or fifth Warp Tour. It's really nice to be back. Um, it's hot, as you know, as you all know. It's hot out there, but it's fucking dope. So you pick up some new survival tips, like, each time? Yeah, this the one, the one this trip is is an umbrella. And so people, you know, in the beginning of the day, people yeah. like you know were kind of like looking at me all weird. The way right. like the end of the day, five or six people come to me and go, "You're genius." Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, Jeez. umbrella and water, kids. I don't Safety know why place. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> in the shade, like yesterday, where were we at? I don't know, but uh, it was equally hot, not hotter. And even to be in the sun for ten seconds, it was, your skin was like burning. Like you just like it was weird. My skin was pulsating. I feel like needles were coming out of it. It's crazy. Not to be. Sissy, man. <laughs> so your latest album was Swan, and that was released back in March. March twenty eighth, yeah. So what can you share with us about the album? How's the feedback been with that? Feedback's been amazing. It's it's easily Unwritten Law's best record to date. So we haven't really got any any complaints about it. Most records take you know takes us you know two or three months to write, and this record took me fourteen months to write and record. You know, with having a five or six five five or six year hiatus. And a really bad reputation. We had to make sure we came back you know, with a really a solid record. You know, and we we left no stone unturned. Like it's it's mean from front to back, all things, eleven tracks. So it is what it is. So how challenging was it to to come back after how you guys like that? Um, I mean, it's 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 all I do, so it's like not challenging at all. During our hiatus, I wasn't. I had two bands going. I had was writing and co-writing and producing. For a lot of artists on different genres, on your arena, Big B, Swayze, Mike Posner, all kinds of acts. And so uh, I, I can keep my musical muscle like moving all the time, so it's not hard to craft a record for Unwritten Law, however, is a bit more pigeon held because you have to write it a certain way, you know what I'm saying? It has to have distorted guitars, you know, it has to be this, that, or the other. Whereas the other stuff that I'm creating can be anything I want, you know, it doesn't have to be held in a box, you know. So uh, that's the only kind of tricky part is to make sure making sure you craft good songs using a certain set of instruments, you know. Is it hard to switch hats between no. like <laughs> no? I mean I've been doing this with Unwritten Law for twenty one years mm -hmm. and before that I was, you know, in a couple other bands for like four years. I've been doing this for, you know, two two and a half decades. So songwriting is like really what I'm into. So, you know, being that it's it's been so long, you know, it's been I'm sure you've witnessed many, many changes like in the music industry mm -hmm. overall. Like how have you been affected by those? Ah uh, well I'm poor. <laughs> And poor music's free, so it's like, you know, basically, before you would kind of like, you would, uh, you know, you would tour so you get fans into you, so they'd buy your record. And now it's you make a record so people can get, so you can go tour and make money, so that's kind of like the thing. The crazy thing, other than the recording process is obviously much easier now. With it's almost like and, a complete opposite from yeah, what it used to be. Totally. It is. What about the rise of social media? I think that's, that's obviously helped out everyone, for sure. You can find acts immediately, friends who, the acts they like, you know, it's, it's just, it's too easy. So yeah, I think uh, the social network has definitely helped out music, for sure. MySpace obviously did a lot for the music industry. You know, Facebook obviously connected so many billions of people, it's like, it's, it's a wrap, you know. It's, it's it, it, because of the internet, it's too easy to access anything you want. So it's like you have some artists that are like adamantly against it, and you know, others that are like full supporters. Of yeah, like, that's. Yeah. I don't get how you can be against it. It's like it's like the new telephones. It's like oh no, I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm not using. I'm not using two star. I'm not, I'm not burning. I'm not burning fucking like fires. Like spending smoke signals. I'm not gonna use the phone. But like fuck, you know. It's like fucking. You know, turn on my computer. Say hi. I don't know. There's some people that trip me out when they say like, oh, I can't get on Facebook. It's like either they're not that smart or they're cheating on their shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, there's only two ways about it. So, you know, how does, how does negative criticism affect you? Uh, I don't know. I think for me, I, I, like, I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't bother me. Like, I hate it. Like, if, you know, if someone was talking shit, like, about me and I, I knew who it was, like, I'd fucking knock them out. So that's really how I feel about it. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I think that's the way anybody would take that. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I mean, if you're going to say something, especially like, if it's, it's like press and stuff like that, like, when you do like an interview with someone, like, and then you go to their country and you like read your interview and they fucking rip you in half, it's like, are you kidding me? Like, I sat there and gave you like 
30 minutes of my day and like you were certainly nice to me on the phone but you're gonna fucking eat me up like you know in the way yeah some people will put like a nasty spin on yeah, it. like, like you like, say it happens all the time and that's why it's like after 20 years of doing this it's like you know you always I mean, I just come straight and be honest and it's no bullshit because mm -hmm. as long as you're cool as long as you're straight like I don't really talk shit if you're being if you're coming correct you know so out on Warp Tour now which songs are really getting the crowd going the most for us mm -hmm. Well, I think that obviously the singles like Seeing Red and Save Me are the ones that stick out and people freak out about most, you know, like when they start or whatever. But um, uh, we're playing two new songs on this from Swan, uh, Starships and Apocalypse and uh, Nevermind. You know, songs are getting amazing I feedback as well. I'm glad to hear that it's in the set. So. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great. So, you know, how's the, the younger crowd reaction been? Um, I think it's, it's, they're kind of shocked, they don't really know what to think, they don't know who we are, so it's like, for us it's like, it's a win-win situation because we're being exposed to so many new kids and so we have our fan base, you know, obviously we've had forever, and then also we have new kids, so it's really like, you know, being on the Warped Tour is a definite blessing, and it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty much an honor, obviously, so the, the it's funny because you'll watch kids just go like, what the fuck is this, and they like, smiles and go all fucking tapping, so like, you know, it's pretty cool. That's great. I've heard too, you know, a lot of bands will be playing and there'll be people walking by and they'll kind of hear it and just drift over to the stage. And yeah, like so sure. many, so many kids are learning about new Different. music. Absolutely. And it's great. And also, this whole like genre crossing that we see, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's like. Well, it's a metalcore scene and there's a whole, you know, alternative music scene and so. And uh, hip hop. So, like, there's all kinds of shit out there. And yeah, for real, it's two festivals. It's like Taste of Chaos meets. You know, modern day warps together, so the kids are getting their fucking money's worth for sure. Of course. So, what are your plans for after World Tour? Uh, we have a headlining tour of the United States in support of Swan, and we have uh, Japan in October and Australia in November. Everyone's saying Australia today. <laughs> Look, everyone's Australia is the mentioned. fucking it's the shit, dude. It's the greatest <laughs> country ever. South America, of course, but <laughs> Australia is amazing. It's seriously like one of my favorite places to play for sure. So, what's been the craziest thing that you've seen uh, on Warped Tour this year? So this far? year? Hmm. I don't know. I have a blackout a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you were bad. Oh, thing. shit. I don't know about that. I don't know. I can't even say that. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Wow, man, you gave me a bill. Like, you let it go. <laughs> Involves fellatio and, and vomit. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Much. Not me, though. All right. We can keep it at that. It's right. fine. We'll keep it PG. So. There you go. <laughs> so, what is the, the best way for us to keep up to date with you? Uh, obviously, you know, through Facebook, Unwritten Law, uh, 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 Twitter, Unwritten, under slash law, and uh, yeah, it's the future, man. Get on the interweb. So, I like to look at music as a universal language that everyone can speak and understand, even though we take different messages away. Is there anything in particular that you hope your music speaks to listeners? Uh, I guess that's a good question. I, I, I want uh, everyone to take what they interpret me saying for themselves with them. Like, that's what I want. Like, for me, music is like someone could be saying one thing. And I can be taking something totally different from it, and it makes that much sense to me. It makes that's where it makes sense to me, and I think that's really what I'd like to have happen is make it connect for someone on an individual, personal level for them. That's it. Like my personal, like you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I like to take away. Like I want to have fucking fun. I want people to listen to my shit and have fun too. So that's really where I'm at. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've heard too that an artist has said like one of the greatest gifts that they can get is when a fan comes up and said their music's, you know, affected them in some way or helped Absolutely them sure. through some situation. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. For me, music does two things. Either you can latch onto it, uh, like say the song's about something that makes you feel less alone, like you're not alone because someone else is going through that experience with you, and or it's like a fucking vacation, like it can take you, if you're having a bad day, if you listen to this, it takes you away from that thing, so it's like it's fucking magic, you know. What do you listen to? It's like escape. What do I listen to? Um, uh, right now, like I'm on a huge '80s kick. I've been listening to the Cars a lot, and like, and like Billy Joel and, and Hall and Oates and like The Cure. But uh, my favorite new band is like The Antwerp. This band from South Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're amazing. Who was it? The Antwerp. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were at um, oh, 
Oh, it's been an experience in New Orleans. Okay. Like I caught them. What'd and you think? Insane. I don't <laughs> think I've up, ever man. seen anything quite like no, that. No, there's nothing like it. it there's, there's no, it's, the, it's, the, it's the fucking freshest shit out, dude. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so, as a just for fun question, what's the strangest rumor that you've heard about yourself? Uh, I've heard a lot of shit. Um, I don't know. The strangest thing I heard I was gay. It's pretty far from the truth, I think. <laughs> I, heard, I heard me and this singer from uh, Greenspoon were having like an affair. I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. Wow. Yeah. Well, you hear that? Don't believe what you read on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh right, oh, yeah. So I, you know, I don't even, I don't bother with that stuff. So yeah, and I don't mind being, I don't care. You call me gay, call me straight, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me. So I guess if, if someone's talking, like if there's rumors going against me, that's kind of exciting. Like you know, that's pretty like cool. So people are making up shit. Like that's gang <laughs> that's that's gangster. People are making up shit about you. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to thank you for taking the time out to speak oh, cool. with thank me. You. It's a pleasure. You know, is there any uh, comments that you'd like to share with our site, Pussy Radio, at PCM? No, thanks for listening. If you haven't listened, listen up. Check out Swan. Came on March 28th. I'm